Shalom, blessings, brothers and sisters, wherever you are around the world. We'd like to welcome you to today's video theme. And as always, of course, a very warm welcome to you, Baruch. It is great to see you today. Shalom, Christian, as well. It's very nice to see you. And I hope that uh, you're well with your family there in Sydney. We're doing well. Praise God. Now, Baruch, uh, this is uh, an interesting topic. I know that people may be questioning, especially with the title, Are You Truly Saved? Uh, recently, we've noticed an increase in people not knowing what the scriptures actually tell us about how to be saved, how to receive salvation, eternal life. Uh, most are not aware, but uh, for example, um, in some of the prayer Zoom groups that we have or where we've been visiting other churches, um, there have been some lovely people, and I want to emphasize that, that um, they even support the Love Israel ministry. They talk about the Lord every day. Um, but when you ask them and the opportunity arose to ask them, well, when did you receive the gospel? When did you make Yeshua Lord and Savior of your life and the repentance that comes with it? Um, there was silence. And that's not a good sign. And um, they say, oh, but I've been attending church all my life. Okay, that's not the question. So uh, then we, of course, refer them to some scriptures, but uh, we were stunned that some people have no idea that they actually haven't received that eternal life yet because of what scripture tells us. They, they, they think of customs and they just go to church and things of that nature. Some uh, couple even that we know, they, they said, no, we've never done that. We just went to a charismatic church and they laid hands on us. We didn't say a thing and they told us we we're in heaven. So this is a big concern. So I think that this is a very, very important video. That's what prompted us to do this video. So if you're ready, Baruch, let's just kick it off. Okay. So like we said previously, sometimes people may sit in a church for years. They may even do some good deeds. But how do we know they're really saved? Now, what does the Bible tell us? So let's just kick this off. Romans 3.23, first of all, we want to set the tone here that we have all sinned and we all fall short of the glory of God. So that's clearly what the scripture tells us, but over to you, Baruch, for your comments. You know, it, it's very true that more and more people say, well, do, do you love Jesus? Do, do, do you want him to be your savior? And people will say yes, and I'm sure they're very sincere. But they don't know about, well, how do you receive him into your life? What does that involve? And here, when we look at Romans 3.23, we have a sin problem. Mm -hmm. And and I can tell you a, a very true story where there was a, a young woman coming to our congregation. This was probably uh, 30 years ago. We were still in the States. And she had come to what she thought was faith. And she was going to this, this uh, singles group, and I won't go into it, but there was some immorality there. And she didn't know that, that this type of behavior is immoral. She just thought it was normal. She had never been taught what, what the Bible says about marriage, about fidelity, about morality, and I'll just leave it with that. But you have to repent. You have to agree with God. Now, repentance, you mentioned that. It's so important. Repentance begins with agreeing with God's standards. This is being challenged today. Many, many pastors today are compromising in regard to the standards of God. Then John the Baptist says, after we do that, we, we bear fruit worthy of repentance. There's, there's two things. First, we agree with God's standards, and when we do, it shows me that I'm a sinner, and I'm in need of a Savior. Some people just say, well, I sure, I, I, I love Jesus. He's, he's wonderful. He's the Lord. I believe all that, but they've never repented. They don't understand their need and what this whole concept of being saved, why there's a need for that, and that is very uh, disheartening today that people don't know the basic truth about receiving the gospel thank you now very important as well as part of this repentance first john 1 8 if we say that we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us your comments bro. again it begins with acknowledging that we're sinful 
It's only when we do that can we understand why the cross. Why did he die? Why did he shed his blood? Why did he suffer? He suffered and died because this is the consequence of my sin, your sin, Christian, the world's sin. He did that in order to save us. He took the punishment so we would not have to. We need to know this. So, so uh, basic. If we say we have no sin, we are deceived and, and we don't understand what he did. So we have to acknowledge our sinfulness. Amen. Romans 6, 23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And that's very important. Like you just touched on Baruch that, uh, you know, it's that original sin and the wages of sin, the, the, the sort of the reward of that sin should have been death to us. But that's when we receive that gift of God that only comes through Yeshua. So your comments, bro. Yeah, well, we, we did die in one sense because Romans 6 says here in the same chapter, when, when Christ died, I died. I died with him because he died for me in my behalf. My sins were placed upon him. But the good news is this. Instead of death, God wants to give us a gift. It's a free gift and it's eternal life. And it's this next phrase that Paul uses so frequently and we, we become so uh, desensitized that we read it and we don't even know the significance of it when it says in Christ, in the Messiah. That phrase in Messiah refers to a covenantal relationship. And that's the key. We have to make a covenantal relationship. And how do we do that? By just believing what God has said accepting what Messiah has done, this free gift, but we have to enter into this new covenant. And this is the problem today. So many times people say, well, I know about the New Testament, but I don't, I don't, what's a new covenant? They don't even know that term new covenant. They don't know that you can use that term for the New Testament, or we're talking about when it says New Testament, it's talking about this covenant that we enter into by faith based upon what Messiah did, that gospel message. And notice something else. It says, in Messiah, Yeshua, our Lord. Now, when we talk about Lord, we're not talking about, well, I have to be perfectly submissive to him in order to be saved. You'll never be saved in that way. But you have to acknowledge him as Lord. And, and this is where it comes to a real critical juncture. And what I mean by that is this. If he's the Lord, I have to agree with him. I want to because he's right. He's the Lord. He's, he's perfect. But I have to agree with him. And, and when someone says, you know, the Bible talks about creation in six days, but, but we know science doesn't teach that. And therefore, when science and the Bible disagrees, I mean, don't we, we, we have to go with science. One pastor recently said that. Yeah. This is not making Yeshua, the Lord of our life. Now, God did, in fact, create the world in six days. I believe that. I don't believe in billions and billions of years old. I believe in a, a much younger earth, probably between six or 7,000 years old. And God can do that. He created things with age. Right. We saw that with Adam. He wasn't created as a, a little infant. Right. So making him Lord means that we have to believe what he says. Correct. Well said. Thank you. Now, how to be saved? What do the scriptures tell us? It's not now what Baruch is saying, what Christian is saying. It's what the scriptures tell us. Key passage in Romans 10, verses 9 to 10, that if we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes into righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'll just hand it straight up to you, bro. Believe that God has raised him from the dead. We have to believe in a resurrected Messiah. If we don't believe in the resurrection, we will not be saved. You can say, I'm a sinner. You can say, I believe he died on the cross for me. But if you don't believe in the resurrection, you have not been saved. So important that we do so. Resurrection is tied to the kingdom. When you doubt the resurrection, you really doubt the kingdom. 
And it's going to be having that kingdom hope that really causes us to live differently. When we believe that there's that day of judgment, and I'm not talking about a day of punishment. When I say the day of judgment for believers, I'm talking about a day of rewards. Do we really believe that there's kingdom rewards? If you do, your life's going to reflect that. Many people, they, they come to the gospel saying, well, maybe, therefore, because there might be, I'm going to say yes. Let me tell you, if you're a might be type of believer, you haven't believed the gospel. And, and it's not, you know, give them a try. And how could it hurt? I've had people, I've heard people say, you know, how, what could it hurt if you accept the God? Go ahead and just, just say that you, that's not faith at all. It's a confession. And confession means you say that which is true within yourselves that you believe. So the resurrection is foundational. Amen. And I'm glad you touched on that, Baruch, because not long ago, um, there was talk on the internet about a certain ministry that well, recently that ministry that had Elon Musk on their program. And I was just, uh, I don't want to be sound over dramatic, but I think sick to my stomach is, is the right phrase to use where they said to him, well, well, we've got you. Do you want to do us a solid and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior? And then he was like, mm, yeah, okay, why not? Well, you know, I mean, how could anyone call themselves a ministry and just say it so casually? So, you know, do us a solid. I mean, it's it, it's crazy what's happening out there. Well, what are your thoughts on those things? Bruce? I'm not even sure. I, I, is solid a favor or? Yeah, yeah, it's a favor. I, yeah, like do me okay. a favor. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, here again, they're not teaching the biblical gospel. And this is the problem today. Many people, I'm talking about churches, they do not teach a gospel that is biblically correct. They stay away from repentance. They don't want to talk about sin or they change the definition of sins. Things that the Bible says are sinful, they, they accept. They compromise. And it's this spirit of compromising the standards of God that is, is related to what we talked about uh, a few weeks ago. And that is that apostasy. So the church, and, and I'm really going to pause for a moment. I want people to know I, I'm thinking through my words. I'm not just, just flippantly saying this. But I truly believe that the church is confused about the gospel. Mm -hmm. That we do not understand what it is and how to genuine, genuinely accept the gospel. Because we have moved away from, from the standards of God. We have moved away from the truth of God, the supernatural resurrection, the bodily resurrection. And, and people are explaining that. It's nothing new. You go to, and, and one of the things I would say, I'm going to go off on a little tangent, but there are some of the most respected seminaries I'm talking about schools that have a, a, a prominent uh, reputation and they have divinity schools. And, and the, the theologians there, they, they believe in the resurrection as something in the sense that the disciples came to the conclusion after the crucifixion that, that the Messiah's teachings, that they came to life, that they believed in now, they saw their, their, their wisdom in it. And that's how they sometimes speak of the resurrection, not a bodily resurrection. This is disastrous. And what we see today is not a great emphasis on the cross nor the resurrection. You have to be speaking about these two things. He died upon the cross and he rose. Thirdly, he died upon the cross because of my sinfulness. I have to acknowledge sin in my life, my need for him. And you're right, Baruch, and, and, and what's so sad is that so many are being deceived because even going back to that Elon Musk interview, I mean, it was all over the internet. Oh, look, he's become a Christian and all this. I mean, the nature, the level of deception is just incredible now and how they take accepting Messiah as Lord and Savior just so casual. Uh, they don't see the significance and the sacrifice, the perfect sacrifice, what he went through for us. And that it's, you're not doing him a favor. I mean, this is the greatest 
thing that we could ever do for ourselves eternally. It's got eternal consequences. I'm just shocked at the level of casualness that people have adopted. Well, what are your views on that? Yeah. And, and, and people are so quick to, to want to be, to be uh, together that they don't realize that sometimes a rejection of the truth uh, uh, makes, you know, we don't have to be mean to each other, but we have to acknowledge there is no unity between us. And let me just give a real uh, true example. Recently, we were in London. Uh, I have pictures of, of it where it says, uh, Muslims love Jesus too. There's a little booth they set up in there. So I wanted to, to use that, that, that picture for a reason. And I took, I was taking pictures there. And the, the guy came up to me and he says, uh, why, why are you taking pictures of my booth? And I said, because I want to, I said, first of all, can, can we shake hands? And, and can we affirm that, that you are a man, I'm a man, we, we should treat each other with respect and be kind? He said, absolutely. I said, but that doesn't mean we always agree with one another. He said, no, I, I understand, no problem. I said, can I speak honestly to you without any fear that, that I'm going to offend you? I, I'm trying to be sincere. He says, yes. I said, you say that Muslims love Jesus. I don't believe you do because the Jesus of my Bible is God. The, 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 the Jesus of my Bible was, was resurrected and he's not coming back to proclaim Muhammad as a prophet. And I went through a few things that Islam teaches, and I said, what's your name? And oddly enough, his name was Muhammad. I said, are you that Muhammad? He said, well, of course not. I'm just named after him. I said, all you're doing is using the name Jesus to describe a Quranic view of Jesus that has nothing to do with the biblical Jesus. So I said, when you say you love Jesus, many people are going to think that you're saying that you love the biblical Jesus, but you don't. You love the Quranic Jesus, which is not the Jesus of scripture. So I said, I wanted to take a picture because I wanted to be able to use this to say, you are misleading people. You're not showing integrity because you're not dealing with the Jesus of scriptures. Again, I don't want to offend you, but this is my position. He was very kind. He understood that. We didn't get angry with each other. We shook hands at the end. But this is the problem. People are hearing things and they're assuming things that are not truth. Truth right. is what gives unity, but truth can also divide. Absolutely right. Thank you. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, but anyone should boast. Once again, it goes down to some people who always say, no, but I'll be saved because I'm a good person. Scripture is very clear on this, but your comments, bro. Well, th there are people who who don't really believe this verse. Now, they may teach it, but but I won't mention names. But recently I heard someone on online, very well-known person, and uh, also I'll mention this one, John Piper. They they have the same uh, philosophy about something, and that is they're saying, by grace you have been saved, but if you're going to enter into the kingdom of God, if you're going to remain safe, then you have to. But this says, it's not of my works. Salvation has nothing to do with my works. It is a gift of God. And it doesn't mean that I have to do something to maintain it. Nowhere in the scripture does it say I maintain my salvation. In fact, Nowhere in the scriptures does Messiah have to maintain our salvation because when you're born again, when you're regenerated, you are given that life. It's a free gift, as it says here. It's nothing to do with what I have done. It's what he has done on the cross. And therefore, we can have assurance. It says here, not of yourselves. I take great comfort in that. If it was of me, I could mess it up. I could, could do something, but it is solely through his work on the cross. And once I enter into that new covenant, once I'm regenerated, I don't know any scripture that says that we can become unregenerated. 
that we can be born again and then unborn again. I, I, I don't see that in the scripture. So grace is what truly saves us. And I believe just that. It saves me. And usually that term for having been saved is in the perfect, which means for, for us Christian, it happened in the past. It's still true today and it's going to be true in the future. So a great verse of scripture for comforting us. And I like to give comfort to people. I don't want to give a false hope. I want to give true comfort based upon the word of God. Amen. Matthew 4, 17. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I think people sometimes do forget the repentance part, which is so important, but I'll hand over to you, bro. Yeah, I, I, I agree so much. Repentance. Uh, it is the foundation here again. It's not speaking about doing good works, although we should do good works, but we don't do good works to be saved. Repentance is not doing good works. Repentance. In fact, here again, if we look at the biblical word for repentance in the New Testament, it's metanoia, which means after knowing something or with the knowledge of that. Meta can mean after or with. Noia is, is knowing something. It comes from the Hebrew, Greek word for mind. So after we know the gospel or with the knowledge of the gospel, we, we understand our guiltiness, our sinfulness. And repenting, I said this earlier, repentance is agreeing with the standards of God and wanting to turn to God. I can't turn to God in my own power. I can have that desire. That's what repentance is, a desire to turn to God. And once we do so, and I'm so glad God meets us where we are to help us through faith, our faith, giving us the Holy Spirit so that we can walk in obedience. You know, we get criticized so frequently about emphasizing obedience. I never, ever have said that we obey God to be saved. It's because we are saved and we've been born again. We're that new creation that our new nature is one to, wanting to obey God. And therefore, I find great comfort in the fact that God has saved me. And therefore, as an expression of appreciation, not because I have to, not because I'm going to be punished if I don't, but because I want to, I want to obey the word of God. And this is what he's talking about. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is hand. We need to have that new nature, a kingdom nature, because time is running out. Correct. Acts 16, 31. So they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. Your comments. Be saved. Now, oftentimes I, I have not looked at the, the, the Greek there, but I'm going to take a a strong uh, uh, suspicion that it shows that we are saved. We don't save ourselves, but, but you believe, and that believing is what's active, and that causes you to be saved, that God will save you based upon faith. So it's the outcome. The believing is the action, and being saved is the cause, and it's our faith that, that moves God to redeem us to save us and notice when it says you and your household it doesn't mean if i become a believer that that covers my family but it means that same uh offering that same gospel is available not just to you christian but to everyone in your household that's what the intent of of this verse is and acts 4 12 nor is the salvation in any other for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved We've touched on this uh, theme on a number of our videos in the past, Brooke, but it's always important to remind people and refresh them that Scripture is very clear that it's only with the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. There is simply no other name. Uh, some people sadly throw the Virgin Mary uh, and Joseph Smith with the Mormons. And, you know, some people even look to the Pope as their savior. Rubbish. Clear. Clear as day, Scripture tells us that it is only through Yeshua, but over to you. Well, this is a, a verse that I mentioned with that, that Muslim uh, individual in London. And I said, you know, we're, we're not worshiping the same God because 
I believe there's no other name other than Yeshua that's given under heaven by which someone can be saved and must be saved by him. So you don't believe that. Now that's 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 your prerogative. You know, we don't have to be angry with each other, but we don't believe the same thing. Your God says something different than my God. They're not one and the same. And what people need to realize is that Muslims don't believe that that Allah is the God of Israel. They don't believe that. So I would hope that Christians would stop this this falsehood saying that that Allah and and God is is one and the same. It's not. Allah is a false representative of of a God. He does not have the characteristics of the biblical God. Allah is not God. It is simply a word made up to refer to their God, not the God of Scripture. There's only one name, and it's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, that is given in order that we believe in him and accept what he's done in order to be saved. No other way. Amen. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I mean, you can't get any clearer than that. I mean, over to you for your comments, bro. Yeah, it's it's not that I believe in God, and by believing in God by default, I also believe him because we believe that he is God. No, only through him. No one comes to the Father except through me. Here, Father, we're speaking about God only through Yeshua. And this idea, I'm the way, the implication is the only way, the truth, he defines with truth, and there's no life, eternal life, salvation, other than through him. This is going to be viewed very soon as a, a spiritual bigotry and is going to be something that the Antichrist empire is going to come against because they want to say there are multiple ways. You know, we some time ago, we mentioned a, a very famous woman, Oprah Winfrey, mm -hmm. and she gets angry when you say that he's the only way. You know, she will say, oh, I'm a Christian, too. I believe in him, but but I don't believe that he's the only way. I believe that that this this religion has their way and this other religion has their way. No, we cannot affirm that that is a lie. It is not truth. And standing for this verse. And let me say, Christian, you know, you mentioned that there's there's a lot of verses. I think that the, the great thing about so many of our videos is that they are full of verses. And they, 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 when they, I'm speaking and speaking too much, what they can do is just tone me out and just keep reading John 14, verse six. I'm the way, the truth, the life. No one comes to father except through me. People need to hear that much more than anything that we could say. That's what they need to know and accept. Correct. And you know, brothers and sisters, the Lord gave us two ears and one mouth. He gave us two ears for a reason. So let's listen to the word of God. Uh, you don't need to worry. Listening, you don't need, listen to, need to listen to Baruch or to myself. But the word of God is so clear, undeniably so clear. And there's no room for compromise. I mean, Baruch, I'm glad you touched on uh, uh, that wicked woman, Oprah Winfrey, because she's just an evil woman, uh, full of deception. But even people that call themselves uh, ministers or pastors or... I mean, the other motivational speaker, Joel Olstein, who is clearly not a believer. I mean, he's been on interviews and uh, he even claimed that he went to, when he was asked on, I think, on CNN, you know, is Jesus the only way to, to, to heaven? He said, well, I don't know. You know, my father was raised in India. And I, when I went with him, I saw how much they love God. And mind you, they've got over 100 million demonic idols that they call gods. There is such deception about something that is so important. But anyway, I digress. So let's uh, let's continue with some uh, scriptures. First Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. I wanted to finish with this scripture, Baruch, because this is also so important. Uh, you see other people also saying, oh, but I'm going to get the Virgin Mary to intercede for me. She can be the mediator or the Pope will be a mediator or things of that nature. 
scripture is so clear as well that there is only one and it's Yeshua HaMashiach, but your comments. Bro. He's the only way, the only one that God will ever uh, uh, accept as the, the mediator between humanity and God. And it says here, the man, because we hear that, and yes, he was fully human, but also fully God. It doesn't mean he's only a man, only human. But the point here, it's emphasizing something. See, I hear this, and I think of the, the word, enosh, which is an Aramaic word, which means man, because of that famous passage in the book of, of Daniel, chapter 7. When there's a, a, a one, a man, enosh, that is the meteor, and he's going to be worshipped as well, that same scripture tells us. So, yes, he's fully man, but he's also fully God. He's the only mediator. And so this scripture is, is emphasizing, I believe it's hinting to what we should remember from the book of Daniel about who he is and what he's going to inherit, that all nations, all people, all tribes, and all languages are going to worship him. Thank you. Just before I hand over to you for, for your final comments, Baruch, I think that from my perspective, I think at a high level summary, we, we've clearly demonstrated that, you know, a church will not save you. It doesn't matter if you've attended church all your life. Good deeds won't save you. You saying that you love Jesus won't save you. Scripture is very clear about what you need to do to be saved. Uh, so, Baruch, I'm just going to hand over to you now for your final comments. How good it is to know that there is one Savior. We don't need to be confused about many and which is the right one. The Bible makes it clear. It's only Yeshua, only Jesus of Nazareth. And the evidence of that is the resurrection, that God the Father raised him from the dead. And when you believe in him, you have that same promise that when you die, he is going to resurrect your soul and at the time of that blessed hope, the rapture, you're going to receive a new body, a body that's perfectly designed for eternity in the kingdom. So don't be confused. Don't be misled. Accept the gospel. Realize that he went to that cross for one reason, because you and I are sinful. And he's the only one that could pay the price. This one who never sinned, but the world crucified him. He died, but he triumphed over death. He had victory over sin. Sin had no authority over him. And he can share with you that same authority that gives us eternal life. So if you've never done so, simply say this prayer, Oh God, I am a sinner. And I trust in the work of Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, upon that cross that he died to pay the price for my sin. I acknowledge that. I accept that. And not only believe that he died for me, but that he rose from the dead, signifying the eternal life that he will give to me and to everyone who confesses his name as his Lord and Savior. Invite him into your life because of what he's done and your need, and he will save you, and you will have that eternal life it's free. All you have to do is to receive it by faith. Amen. I certainly can't add anything further to that, Baruch, but uh, if uh, anyone has made the commitment, has accepted the gospel, Yeshua HaMashiach as Lord and Savior, please write to us at Australasia at loveisrael.org. Uh, we'd, we'd love to hear about it. We praise God for it, for his faithfulness and his mercy. And Baruch, once again, thank you very much for your time. It's been a blessing to me today. And more importantly, I pray it's been a blessing to everyone watching. So from Baruch and Israel, from myself here in Sydney, Australia, shalom and blessings.